Hello, lovely patrons. Excuse me. Let's try this again. Hello, lovely patrons. It is Wednesday, or if you prefer, Monday the 3rd, and we are here with another vlog post. Um, it is New Orleans. It is between storms with heavier storms on the way. And, you know, my office kind of smells like wet dog, but that's okay. There's an adorable wet dog within it. Um, let's see. So we've got some cool new stuff up at the site, unlikelystories.org. Uh, first off, if go check out the works of Cecilia Chapman. Um, she's put together a new series called Strange Love about orchids, and we've got up six watercolors right now that are um, that are watercolored abstract impressions of thoughts of orchids. Uh, really beautiful stuff. Um, you really want to check it out. It's called Strange Love up right now, and we've got some other cool stuff up there. We've got a new poem by Clay Thistleton. Um, Clay has written. Uh, first off, it's called Red Herring Leather Boots: colon, Gabriella Versace. Uh, spelled, I think it's pronounced Versace because it's spelled in an Italian way rather than a French with two C's at the end. Um, <clears throat> where the hell is, is the famous Versace from? I really don't care. Okay, so so what he's done is, uh, Clay Thistleton is um, an Australian poet who writes these very uh, long pieces with a lot of um, uh, projective verse work, a lot of form issues. Um, and this one is about a um, nonfiction account of someone who says they were abducted by aliens. And um, this um, strips down their account and renders it in poetic form and starts dealing with those issues in a poetic form. Really, really fascinating work. Um, so yeah, go check that out. Go check out Cecilia Chapman and check out the other cool stuff we have on Unlikely right now. Um, lots of cool stuff. I've been working on a few projects. Um, I've updated my personal website, which is at jonathan.unlikelystories.org. No www, just jonathan.unlikelystories.org. That's up. I've been um, working on getting some of the old Unlikely Books titles converted into Kindle format. Um, we're doing that now. We're working on um, um, Belinda Superman's Black Holes, Sorry, Blue Rooms, Black Holes, White Lights by Belinda Subramon. Um, that's been out for a while as a chapbook. We re-released it as a perfect bound, that is glue bound chapbook. And now we're releasing it in a Kindle edition, um, probably sometime next month. Uh, we're doing the same thing with Lawrence Welsh's Carney Takedown, which is uh, from further back and um, back in 2009. It's a chapbook. He did not want it. Uh, reproduced in the glue bound edition. Sorry, I thought I heard someone knocking at the door. He didn't want a new glue bound uh, uh, edition to, because to him that was a one time chat book. We made 50 copies. He wanted it to be a limited run, but he is interested in having it uh, released as an ebook so that more people can read it without actually buying it. Um, I mean, it'll be like a buck 99, you know, you'll be all right. Okay, so that's coming out. Um, we'll have an ebook edition of Scorpions, our title from last year by Joel Chase and a new Kindle edition of Soy Solo Parabras But Wish to Be a City, which is a graphic long poem written in native Spanglish. And by native Spanglish, I mean, um, it is not English with a few Spanish words. It is not Spanish with a few English, English words. It is a native uh, combination of the languages written by someone who grew up hearing both simultaneously spoken all the time. Really, really cool stuff, beautifully illustrated. You can find that on Smashwords now. Um, if you're not familiar with Smashwords, that is an alternate uh, ebook provider. We've gone ahead and put it up there. Um, and you can also purchase it, a physical copy from Amazon. Um, beautiful, beautiful work. Uh, you should really check that out. And okay, so I'm working on those ebooks and I am working on a ebook of my own. Um, Jeffrey side of Argotist ebooks has asked that I put together an ebook and I'm working on that and I'm still in pretty early stages conceptually. So, you know, but that's just what I'm working on. Okay, so those are projects. Those are what's up on Unlikely um, right now. And very tangentially, um, and by tangentially, I mean not related at all, uh, Rosalind and I went to a um, concert the other evening. It was a small classical concert by a contemporary classic composer. Um, and it was in a coffee shop after hours. Just a fun little thing, you know, for friends of the musicians um, and the stage manager um, and the um, 
the cafe owner had quite a few people there. They were throwing around a box of wine. I had my flask, call is good. And we were listening to a new piece, um, a new classical piece. Um, the, like I say, um, there, there was, the cafe owner was there with her friends and there were several technical problems in the beginning, um, a series of unfortunate technical issues that really made the thing pretty late in getting started. So, you know, some people left and I mean, it was just a free fun thing. Um, and, but, um, the, the cafe's, uh, owner and her friends were all there and among the, um, cafe's owner, cafe owner's friends, see, I can work together several words in a phrase without losing the thread of my thought. Among those friends, there was a punk couple, um, you know, sometime probably in their late twenties, um, a bigger white dude and a smaller Japanese dude. Um, they were dressed, um, the white dude had pink hair, um, and they were both wearing, uh, pajama bottoms and really filthy t-shirts and no shoes. This is the French quarter mine. So, so wearing no shoes is quite a bit of commitment. There is a lot of piss and puke on the ground. Okay. Um, but, um, yeah, so this, um, they were there and, um, yeah, everybody was watching and the little dude started rubbing up against the big dude. And it's like, oh, it was cute. You know, there was space for them or for at least for the little dude to lie down and he was lying down and he was kind of rubbing up on the big dude. Um, you know, they, they were on ecstasy. I mean, that was obvious. Um, but it was still pretty cute until the little dude started doing an interpretive gyrating dance in the very, very limited floor space between the musicians and the audience, um, just took it upon himself to um, do a dance, which he did very well. I'm thinking he's a street busker and that's what he does. But it was a little crowded. Um, and, you know, he was he was gyrating, which no one was really expecting. And, you know, at, at first I'm like, oh, this is completely inappropriate. And then I saw he had an erection. And there's a certain point where the inappropriate just becomes sublime and you have to roll with it. Now, that's for me as an audience member. I can't say the musicians thought much of it, especially when he decided to uh, hump one of the music stands. That was pretty exciting. Um, so we've got this uh, little dude in pajama bottoms with a raging heart on humping the music stands while the musicians are trying to work. And I, again, as an audience member, it just kind of added to the whole experience. Um, and as we left, we, we knew the stage manager and we, you know, kind of hugged him goodbye and, and waved and extricated ourselves quickly because he was having to apologize to each of the musicians in turn, which, um, yeah, yeah, I don't envy him that task. Um, I have no reason to envy anyone. I got to watch this um, man gyrate and uh, hump a music stand to amuse himself at a concert. And I, I came out way ahead on this one. Uh, I doubt they'll be working with that cafe again then. Okay, that's all. Um, a few things I'm working on in a pointless story. Have a wonderful week.